try and find somewhere to put you so you can see. I'm thinking maybe right here. I think that would also be easier if I had a GoPro. One of these days. Uh, right now, we just get to use the good old-fashioned phone. All right, y'all stay right there. Hang on tight. Don't fall off. That would be sad. <laughs> just working on getting these loose and that yeah, there you go you can see that screw right there is really stubborn and uh, first time I've ever used this screwdriver it's brand new and yeah you know if you can see that camera doesn't really want to focus on it but it's broke and twisted apparently I'm stronger than I thought it was and that screw is on rear than I thought it was because it didn't work so, I'm going to take you on a little field trip, go get a different screwdriver that uh, won't break. Because, obviously that one was not up to the challenge. So, um, we go over here to Dad's garage. We got more tools. Got a few tools in here. This building is primarily for, well, it was built primarily for potato and onion storage in the wintertime. And, oof. Also, uh, it's the headquarters for the summertime when we're doing sweet corn, watermelons, tomatoes, and peppers, and pumpkins, all that good stuff. So, yeah, that is, that's where everything happens. And then this time of year when it gets cleaned out, we uh, use it for a shop so we can work on things, stay out of the cold, and be a little more productive. So, yeah, this is where we actually started all of our vegetable stuff. We jumped in. The vegetable industry, we needed somewhere to do it. So we just took over Dad's garage and started there. So this patio, actually, there's a room underneath there. And we commandeered that and turned that into our cooler. Put a compressor in there and cool it off. So it was refrigerated. And then in here in the garage, we took over this whole space, kind of commandeered this from him as well. And this is where we did everything. That's where we started, right here. Our humble, very, very humble beginnings. So, yeah, this is where we where we got started. Had all our tools in here, all the vegetable stuff was in here, everything was in here. So, those are the screwdrivers we need. Um, yeah, it's kind of a mess in here. I'm not sure who. Thought that light was on. Um, not sure who came in here and made a wreck of it, but somebody did. Here's our sad fuzz cat. He got in a fight with somebody. Now he's hurting. So, turn out lights. Yeah, when we first started, we did everything by hand. Um, everything in there was done by hand. We washed everything by hand. Our first acre of potatoes. Yep, we planted them by hand, we dug them by hand, and washed them by hand, sorted them, sized them, all by hand. Picked them all up off the ground, put them in 100 pound gunny sacks, stacked them in the field, and came back and got them and heaved them into the truck. Loaded up the pickup truck with them, hauled them there and then there to the garage and stacked them. It was an adventure. That's our sizing line right there. One of these days I'll show that to you. But it's cold today. And I'm being a wimp. I'd rather be in here where it's warm. So we're gonna come in here and make things happen on this sprayer. So now that we've got some stout screwdrivers, I don't think those will break. I'm not that strong. We will show that screw who's boss and make this happen. <laughs> Okay, this one is even more ornery. Um, believe it or not, I put a little bit of a curl in that, and now it doesn't want to grab it. And 
this one is just a little bit too big. It won't fit in there. So, I guess uh, try and grind it out. Anybody have any good suggestions on a semi stripped out, very stubborn flathead screw? I don't know. Let's see what we can come up with. Because she's got to go. Got that off. I'll tell you what, there's an inordinate amount of water hiding out in that hose for having traveled all the way from wherever it came from. <laughs> Kansas, that's where it came from. For having traveled all the way from Kansas, being cut on both ends and open. And all the bumping and moving around I've done here to get it in here. Unbelievable. Anyway, we got it off. So that's good. Now I can set it down, lay it down. <laughs> Boy, sometimes I'm not a very good cameraman, am I? So we set it down, lay it down, get those figured out. It's gonna come this way onto its front. And hopefully that way we don't wreck anything and we can get the back part done. it in the best way to do this I don't know <laughs> you guys tell me what's the best way what do you like so got this side welded in top and bottom so I think we're all ready to go there um, so now it's time to put this on um, so I'll move the welder and we'll go pick this up with the forklift and hopefully I can do this by myself because I'm the only one here not centered but that's okay I wasn't too particularly worried about getting it centered it's gonna come right back off once I measure the braces I just wanted to get it up there make sure everything looks good it seems to be square um, I need to measure from that bracket there down to this one here which is gonna scoot back it's gonna scoot that back and then we'll measure that so that we know what kind of brace size we need there decide what we're going to do for a brace um well, that sure is pretty tall a little bit worried that we might be too tall for spraying our small stuff 
we really didn't want to make another hoist kind of under the gun that's our only other option is to either totally build a whole new hoist here or to make like a cascading hoist either one's going to be a lot more work and money and yeah we're we're kind of under the gun to get all this done so we're i think we're going to run with this maybe we'll change it next year if we don't like like the results but i'll bet this will work okay at least for now so anyway got some more welds to do unstick my stuck rod there weld over there yeah wish this camera had a wider lens if anybody knows how to make a moto g power yeah moto g power i think that's what this is um have a wider lens let me know because that sure be useful or just buy a gopro kelby okay here we go. got this there we go <laughs> got this taken back off i've got most of this welded i've got to kind of figure out how to flip this over so i can weld underneath these plates right here um decide how to do that i'm not really sure i'm hoping that maybe i can just stand it up with a forklift and lean it forward <laughs> and be able to get at it on kind of an angle that way underneath there right there yep um so anyway yeah for those of you that don't know anything about welding that's what we've been doing here building this is welding on it that is our welder right over there holy cow right there it's a miller dial art 250 we love it it's been a great welder um welded a lot of things with that built a lot of things heavy things light things it does a good job but it's got two leads these wires right here are the leads um you got some adjustments there you can turn up quote unquote turn up the heat the on off switch change polarity some things like that but these leads they come over here this is the ground lead um it attaches to whatever you're working on ultimately what we're doing is creating a current it comes out of that welder through these leads creates an arc, melts metal, and then goes back into the welder. I'm gonna lift this up, the forklift, and try to get back up under there. Uh, well, not try. I will, because we have to. That needs to be welded. So once I get that welded, both sides, um, then we're ready to put it back on the sprayer, and we'll be done with this part, aside from strengthening this right here we're gonna add a piece across that weld that in so where we're at now i'm trying to get to where we can weld the back side of those plates um not really the way i wanted to have this i'm not sure how much i like to trust my life to four whew, backwards four straps four of these little winky straps I think it'll be okay. It should be. They're supposed to hold 500 pounds. So together, there's four of them. Should be a thousand, what, 2,000 pounds worth of strap there. And that definitely does not weigh 2,000 pounds. So we should be good, right? Anyway, either way, I'll mostly weld from this side in case it does decide to tip over. Um, then I don't become a pancake man. I don't want to be a pancake man, so. 